Hey everyone, and welcome back to Cruising with Matthew. In this video, I'm going to give you some hints and tips on how to make the most of your time on board Fred Olsen's Balletta. So, I really hope you enjoy this video. Number 1. Balletta is a traditional ship. Unlike most other cruise lines these days, Fred Olsen maintains a traditional cruise experience on board their ships. This influences the whole cruise experience and really helps set them apart from other cruise lines in my opinion. Balletta offers smaller, more cosy lounges where you can sit back and read your favourite book or enjoy a performance by the various musicians playing throughout the ship. Likewise, she has a large library as well as a card room which hold dedicated bridge sessions as well as a whole area dedicated to arts and crafts. Traditional features such as set dining times and formal nights are maintained, as are events such as the captain's welcome and farewell evenings, crew shows and lectures from experts in their various fields. This didn't make our cruise feel stuffy or pretentious. Instead, it helped make everything feel relaxed, unhurried, and by the end of the cruise, I felt as if Balletta was my second home. Balletta's smaller size really helps with this, as the crew never felt rushed, so you got a fantastic level of service. You also got chance to get to know them on a more personal level, which helped make our cruise feel even more special. A word of warning though, by the end of the cruise, you won't want to get off. Number 2. Watch a sail away from Balletta's forecastle and the lookout. A unique feature to both Balletta and her sister ship Borealis is the fact you can actually go right onto the ship's bow. Known as the forecastle, this area is open at certain times during your cruise, including sailaways or periods of scenic cruising. For instance, on our trip, we sailed past the Tower of Hercules following our departure from La Coruña. This is such a cool spot, although it does feel like you've gone into an area of the ship you're not supposed to. However, it is well signposted, so persevere and the views you get are totally worth it. You can also access the lookout, which is situated on deck 6, just below the bridge. This was my preferred spot over the forecastle, as you are able to look over the bow itself, and I feel it gives you a better panoramic view. There's also plenty of seats here, so it's a great spot just to take in the views as Balletta makes her way between destinations. Therefore, I'd urge you to listen out for the captain's announcements, as this will give you an idea as to when you can access this unique point on the ship. Number 3 make the most of the main dining room. On board Balletta, the main dining rooms span two decks, with the Bloomsbury restaurant being on deck four, whilst the aptly named Terrace restaurant is on deck five. Although most people eat here for dinner, the Bloomsbury restaurant is a great option for breakfast and lunch on both sea and port days as you get a great selection of meals to choose from, and we were so impressed with the taste and presentation of practically every meal that was served here. For breakfast, you have a range of choices, including so-called healthy choices, including a chocolate bowl, which tasted incredible. Likewise, you can go for more traditional offerings, such as Eggs Benedict, Cook's Breakfasts, as well as fully customizable omelettes. Lunch is just as decadent, with the chance to enjoy a three-course meal with portion sizes rivaling even that of dinner. The menu was hugely varied, ranging from whole legs of lamb to even sushi. However, the desserts were also fantastic, so definitely worth saving some space for. In addition to all that amazing food, the service here was fantastic and it just helped make the whole experience feel relaxed and a bit more special than having your meal in the buffet. The galley team were also fantastic at accommodating Yeyan's dairy intolerance. Provided he ordered the day before, he could have any dish he wanted on the menu, which was so nice to see, and it never felt like he just had to make do with what he was given, which has happened on other cruise lines, so we were really impressed with this. Number 4. The Thermal Spa is Fantastic Value 
Whilst on our cruises, me and Yeyan love giving a ship's thermal spa a go. Now these can be fairly pricey, and if you're on a busy sailing, the thermal spa can get quite busy as well. However, we were so impressed with the thermal spa on board Balletta. For an hour session, it cost £10 per person or £15 for two people, which we thought was great value. What makes this even better is the fact that for the duration of that hour, you're the only people in there, so you get the whole area to yourself, which I found to be just incredible. The thermal spa itself features two separate steam rooms, your own hot tub, although this was sadly drained during our visit as it was quite choppy. There's also these fabulous ceramic relaxation beds, which definitely lived up to their name as we found them to be super relaxing, especially as you got to enjoy these stunning sea views thanks to the multiple floor to ceiling windows in this area. In kinder weather, you'd also get access to the spa's dedicated open decks, which would give you fantastic views over the bow of the ship, as well as being able to look all the way down the side. Although it was way too windy for us to even try open the door during our visit, let alone go outside. Overall, we found this to be a wonderful hidden gem on Balletta. It's fantastic value, and a great way to relax. Number 5 enjoy a culinary demonstration in the auditorium. Another great feature to both Balletta and Borealis is the auditorium. Although this is a multifunctional space, offering film screenings and things like that, I'd really recommend taking some time to visit one of the cookery demonstrations held here by members of the galley team. This gives you the opportunity to learn how to make a number of dishes ranging from ones made in Balletta's speciality restaurants, as well as dishes inspired by the places that you're visiting during your cruise. During these demonstrations, you get a recipe sheet so you can recreate the dishes at home, which I thought was a lovely touch. A personal highlight, however, was the fact that you also get to sample each dish that has been made, which was much appreciated. If time allows, I'd really recommend attending one of these, as it's included within your fare, and we found all the chefs to be super friendly and happy to answer any culinary questions you may have. Number 6. Attend some of Balletta's special evening events. Now, in addition to all the fabulous activities on board Balletta, Fred Olsen do offer some special evening events if you fancy something a bit different. Most of these do carry an extra charge, and we were kindly gifted these opportunities during our cruise, but I just wanted to highlight them so you can have an idea as to what you can expect. Firstly, there's Shaken Not Stirred, which is held in the ocean bar, typically on a formal night. This Bond-inspired evening gives you the chance to try a range of martinis whilst listening to the Balletta Theatre Company vocalists perform classic Bond songs, ranging from the iconic Goldfinger to my personal favourite, Skyfall. With the exception of any drinks you might want to purchase, this event is completely free, so I'd strongly recommend getting there early to guarantee you get a good seat. Next up, there's the Martini Experience, which is also held in the Ocean Bar. Costing £22 per person, this event gives you the chance to learn how to make various styles of martinis, as well as the history behind their creation. This is a wonderfully light-hearted presentation, and our bartenders for the evening were so much fun, and we never stopped laughing. You can even volunteer and make your favourite martini, which both me and Yeyan did. Although it was a little scary, the bartenders quickly put us at ease and we got to enjoy an extra martini, which is always a plus. During this event, you'll also get to see the bartenders showing off their flaring skills, which was certainly impressive. Included in the price are up to four martinis, which you can enjoy throughout the event. Do note, however, they don't all need to be drunk in one sitting and can be redeemed for several days following the martini experience. Overall, we were really impressed with the evening, and considering you get the whole experience of the event and up to five martinis if you volunteer yourself, this was great value if you're a martini lover like me. Finally, there's a cheese and wine evening, which is held in the observatory, Valletta's Forward Observation Lounge. 
The cost of the event is dependent on the wine that you choose to enjoy throughout it. The crew do a great job at making this event feel really intimate with an air of sophistication about it. The real highlight, however, is the selection of cheeses you get to enjoy your wine with. These are sourced locally from the ports that you've been visiting and taste absolutely incredible. There was such a variety of cheeses on offer and I just had to try each one. You know, for research purposes, of course. Number seven, there are unique cabins on the promenade deck. Now, a quirky type of cabin to consider when you're going on Balletta are terrace cabins on deck three, which is also Balletta's promenade deck. Now, unlike traditional balcony cabins, these offer sliding doors which lead straight onto the promenade itself. You get your own set of dedicated sun loungers with essentially the whole promenade deck being your balcony. The trade-off for this, of course, is the fact that you don't get the privacy of a standard balcony and there will always be people walking past your cabin during the day. Do note, however, that all these cabins, as well as the outside cabins on this deck, have a form of one-way privacy glass. For instance, we got to tour one of the outside cabins on this deck and you had a completely normal view when looking out the window, yet if you looked in from the promenade deck, it was completely reflective, so there's no chance of anyone looking in when you're getting changed and things like that. It's a similar setup for the terrace cabin doors as well. I've heard this style of cabin is great for those who are hunting for the northern lights or searching for wildlife, as as soon as you hear an announcement from the bridge, you can be out on the open deck in seconds. Therefore, it's totally personal preference if these cabins would suit you, but it's just something to consider if you're booking a cabin in this area. Number eight, consider trying the speciality restaurants on board Balletta. Most dining options on board Balletta are included within your fare, with the exception of her two speciality restaurants. The first restaurant, Vasco, is situated in a portion of the view, Balletta's Buffet. This is transformed every evening to offer an intimate dining experience where you can enjoy go and inspired dishes. After ordering, you get the chance to enjoy a range of naans, poppadoms and chapatis, as well as a selection of chutneys and dipping sauces. Starters are typically sharing platters, which are a great idea, as it gives you the chance to try a variety of foods, including some which you might not try if you had a whole starter dedicated to them. This included a variety of food, including mussels, mackerel croquettes, squid, and even sausage naan, which all tasted absolutely fantastic. Main courses included a plethora of curries, with different styles to choose from. Meat dishes featured beef, lamb and chicken, whilst you could also enjoy fish and prawn curries as well as vegetarian ones too. Alongside your main dish, you can choose several side dishes. This included steamed rice, spiced potatoes, dal, palak paneer and vegetable pilau. After all that rich food, the dessert options are thankfully light. These include babinka, which is a delicately spiced cake with a fudgy texture inside, or a goan creme caramel type dessert, which I really enjoyed. As for colours and tastes, this celebrates Asian cuisine, and the restaurant itself really makes the meal feel special, as it's so ornate in its decoration, and the staff here were always eager to assist in your menu choices. After ordering, you were given the choice of a selection of speciality breads, along with a variety of dipping sauces. Me and Yeam were really impressed with the starters, and I enjoyed that they varied from familiar Asian dishes to more unique ones, such as the fabulous beef maki rolls, with another personal highlight being the barbecue bao buns, which were packed full of flavour. The main course is just as varied and include items such as crispy fried chili beef or a personal favourite, the chicken and prawn pad thai, which was so good, although very filling. To accompany your main course, you can choose from a selection of side dishes, with me and Yeyan choosing the steamed jasmine rice and the pork sumai. The desserts were a bit different to what I'm used to and we were quite impressed with the selection here. This included a spiced pear dessert, which was a refreshing way to end the meal after all that nice rich food. 
However, my favourite was the chocolate spice donut, which was so decadent but tasted fantastic. A meal in either restaurant costs £10 per person if pre-booked before the cruise or £15 if booked during the cruise itself. Both restaurants have three different menus which change once every four days. Now we were gifted the opportunity to dine in both venues twice and we loved every meal here. Although Vasco and colours and tastes do cost a little extra, I think they're totally worth it, as they're just a little different to the other food offerings on board Belletta and feels extra special. Number 9. Make the most of the Neptune Lounge the Neptune Lounge is Belletta's theatre and spans two decks across both decks 4 and 5. I'd highly recommend going here in an evening in order to see the varied performances that go on here. This includes full-scale production shows by the Belletta Theatre Company as well as visiting entertainers ranging from comedians to even a virtuoso violinist who was just incredible. As amazing as the evening performances are, I'd recommend that you keep an eye out for the daytime activities held in the Neptune Lounge as well, especially on a sea day. Here, you can make the most of Fred Olsen's Enrichment Programme, which explores an array of varied topics depending on your cruise. For instance, we got to hear from an ocean liner expert telling us the fascinating history of how Fred Olsen Cruise Lines was founded. Likewise, you can attend talks held by members of the Belletta Theatre Company as they tell you about life on board and how they became performers. A true must-see, however, was a Q&A session with the captain himself, which gave a fascinating insight into the realities of working at sea and what it takes to progress through the ranks to become a captain. The Neptune Lounge also hosts the Captain's Welcome Party, this is your chance to meet the senior officers of Belletta and learn a few anecdotes about your cruise and what to look forward to. What makes it even better is the fact that throughout the event, you get to enjoy a range of complimentary alcoholic or non-alcoholic drinks, as well as a selection of both hot and cold canapes. This really helps elevate the whole evening and makes it feel extra special, so do keep an eye out for it on your daily times. On longer cruises like ours, you also get the chance to attend the captain's farewell party, which typically is held on the last formal night of your cruise. This gives you another opportunity to enjoy those complimentary drinks and canapes, but did feel bittersweet as it means this fantastic cruise is coming to an end. This being said, it's a great way to reflect on the cruise and give thanks to all the fabulous crew who work tirelessly on board. Therefore, I'd really recommend attending both the welcome and farewell parties, as we really enjoyed them. Number 10. Try Fred Olsen's traditional afternoon tea in the observatory. Now, the observatory is my favourite bar on the ship, as it offers some fabulous forward-facing views thanks to the numerous windows in this venue. This was a great spot to relax in by day or in an evening. We really enjoyed coming up here to have a few cocktails and listen to the varied music performances here, such as the talented Impromptu Trio. The observatory is also where you'll find one of my favourite indulgences of the whole cruise, Fred Olsen's traditional afternoon tea. This extra charge event is typically held on sea days and costs £13 per person. Now we were gifted this opportunity and we absolutely loved it. Walking in, you're guided to your table by friendly white gloved waiters as gentle music is being played in the background by one of the ship's musicians. You're then given a selection of teas to choose from which are included in your fare or if you want to make it even more special, you can order a glass of champagne or a Pimm's cocktail. The afternoon tea itself is a decadent affair, offering a range of tasty finger sandwiches as well as a plethora of cakes and patisserie to enjoy too. Each stand serves two people and there's plenty to go around, so make sure you have a light lunch beforehand. Fred Olsen also did a fantastic job at preparing a dairy-free version for Yeon, and it looked just as good as ours. So if you do have an intolerance, just make sure you let them know when you're booking, and they'll be able to adapt it. 
Overall, the afternoon tea is just a wonderful little luxury as you get to enjoy incredible food, attentive service, all while listening to talented musicians accompanied with some fabulous sea views. So there you have it, my top 10 hints and tips on how to make the most of your time on board Fred Olsen's Balletta. However, whatever you choose to do on board, I'm sure you're going to have a fantastic time. A massive thank you to Fred Olsen for gifting me this incredible trip and gifting me all the additional experiences along the way. If you've enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe as it's always appreciated. If you want to know more about Cruising with Matthew, then take a look at my social media links which are in the description below. I hope that you're all doing well at the moment and I can't wait to see you in my next video. So until next time, this is Cruising with Matthew and thank you so much for watching.